increasingly, all of us have to be comfortable in the chaos that this new technology era brings. I used to talk about that a lot inside government rooms and a lot of um, frow furrowed brows when I was talking about this concept of being comfortable in the chaos. But I think it holds true even more so today in terms of the shifts that we're seeing now. You know, let's think back to the 1940s, these incredible trailblazers, McCulloch and Pitts writing this paper on artificial neurons. If anyone's interested, I can share some of the text. It's beautifully hand-drawn architecture that these guys came up with. Um, I don't think they would have ever imagined that we would have reached where we are in the AI journey, even pre-Gen AI. I mean, I think we take for granted so much of what happens on our devices, whether they be phones, laptops, desktops, whatever it is. I don't think society quite understands what AI is doing and enabling in the background for them already. And many of those early pioneers themselves, I think, would have been marveling at where we are already. And that's without Gen AI um, being on the scene. And there is no doubt now that, that this acceleration is happening in a way that we are all trying to navigate ourselves through. So what links us all in this room, apart from the fact we're all incredibly good looking, we're all wonderfully intelligent, and we're all eager to, to absorb new technology? Well, to be frank, it's about the dollar signs. You know, we all understand that this is unlocking economic opportunities globally that just Again, we don't quite fully understand in terms of the way our economies are going to shift, but what we do know is that there's going to be a fundamental growth in the way that AI, generative AI, is going to build our economic outputs. If I draw your attention to the Goldman Sachs figure there, you know, 15% increase in productivity and an increase in GDP of 7 trillion US dollars by 2030. Put that in perspective. That is over four times Australia's current GDP being put into the global economy by 2030. Those are not insignificant numbers and should certainly be sharpening our thinking on, well, what slice of that pie can we get and what can we generate for our businesses um, and our economic interests as well? And in Australia, the Tech Council have predicted that if there is an should I use the word, yeah, aggressive take up of generative AI, you could see productivity figures of $115 billion being pumped into our economy by 2030 as well. Now, what are the kind of timelines we're dealing with here? Well, you know, short term, what, what's happening right now, we're seeing the early adopters um, pull together the capabilities of Gen AI to drive productivity, optimize, um, and, and we've seen or, and heard already many of the great case studies. You know, the early, these co-pilots that you're seeing increasingly come into the scene and many of you I'm sure already use, you're already seeing in some areas of software development increasing productivity by up to 50%. You know, that's, that's incredible. And I'm sure everyone uses them in their everyday lives. Um, it's quite formidable what's happening already um, in, in terms of take up. And really we're only looking at that seven to 10 year time horizon to see some of the fully mature benefits of generative AI as it's being adopted across industry, across society. And that's where we'll begin to see that fundamental transformation of what jobs are beginning to look like and what new kinds of job categories um, will be emerging. Well, what does this look like across sectors? We, we've heard some excellent case studies, so I won't labor the point in the different sectors so much. But from, again, having that wonderful time out to study, to read, to, to absorb, I'm, I'm a massive nerd. I love reading, I love absorbing what's going on out there and um, having that time, again, has been a real privilege. You know, if you, if you look at the literature that's out there, it's really telling us that, you know, there is a boom across certain key sectors that we, we need to take hold of. Now, we've already heard a great case study just previously um, from Chris around what's going on in the energy sector. And I think if you're in an energy company, you're absolutely trying to understand how it's optimizing delivery and usage of energy um, and facilitating that integration of renewable energy sources that we heard about. Um, and in the food production sense, it's, it's quite similar. It's about optimization. It's about increasing your productivity and cutting away the fat, if you will, from, from operations. It will fundamentally shift both these sectors. Equally in the transportation and healthcare sector, I mean, you probably couldn't find a more prominent example of what AI will mean. Um, I, I don't know if anyone 
I'm talking to a tech crowd. The recent RSA conference, there was an incredible number of photos on my LinkedIn feeds of everyone getting into the autonomous driving vehicles. That was the photo, it seemed, for everyone to have in San Francisco right now. That is one of the biggest symbols of what AI is achieving currently and will do so in the future. But again, the fullest evolution of that begins to actually help in terms of road safety, in terms of energy usage, in terms of pollution, congestion, and supply chain efficiency. And in the healthcare sector, there are questions around privacy and security that have already been mentioned, and I'll talk a little bit more about that during my, my conversation with you guys. Um, but you know, if we'd be able to personalize treatment plans, if you understand the physiology of an individual and all of their individual needs, the kinds of tailored healthcare programs that you can then provide are incredible and could well in lead to an extended lifetime um, for, for future generations in terms of them being on this planet. Uh, the education sector, this is an incredible incredibly important sector. It's very close to my heart. I spent my life growing up with two parents as teachers, honestly, for their sake. And, you know, not to be too sentimental, but for my family's sake, I wish this evolution was happening back when I was growing up. It would have saved so much time that they were spending on class preparation, um, on f absolutely focusing on the individual needs of children, but they could have had an assistant there in generative AI to help them tailor those programs to the specific requirements of individuals that they were working with. So I think it's a very powerful example of, of what it's going to be um, enabling. But I come with warnings. I'll mention it again. You know, I've spent a lot of time in the national security world and looking at, at, at security issues, so I'm always very risk aware. And so there are so many benefits, but there are many challenges to come here, and here are a few of those. You know, we could well see the current economic inequalities being exacerbated. The fact that um, it appears that generative AI, AI in general, is going to benefit most highly skilled workers and, and potentially increase that gap between lower skilled um, workers. And we need to be thinking about that in our work plans, our workforce design and training um, for the future. And developing countries could well struggle to keep pace uh, with lack of access to resources and the kinds of infrastructures that you need to build the kind of architecture to really draw upon um, AI's benefits. And there will be significant strain placed upon energy production. You're already seeing that happen. Um, we already spoke about that in the previous panel. It's incredibly important, but the kind of compute power that's required and is being asked for now from consumers will put significant strain upon our networks. Um, and AI is data-driven, so you know that. But we're going to have an increasingly sharp focus now on privacy and security issues and add to that intellectual property issues which we've heard about. This means governments and companies have to be coordinating on AI policy which protect public interest, business interest, and also promote the ethical use of AI. Um, 